art of the rhyme here from Get Over It Media. Several years ago, I was watching a video on Twitter, and it was that of a single mother at the doctor's office with her son. The child appeared to be about eight or nine years old. That means that he was half grown. Be that as it may, the child was unhappy about something that was taking place. As a result, he began to physically lash out at his mother. This included pulling her hair and striking her in the face, along with calling her names. It was interesting to read people's visceral response to a child assaulting his mother. Most of the responses called for swift and definitive retribution on the wayward child. However, there were a few who thought that beating the child was not the ideal solution, as it would teach the child to fear the parent. Let me say this, that's theory. What we actually have in real life is a parent who should fear their child. Because as the child grows, it's only going to get worse. Y'all do realize that there are children who abuse their parents and even kill their parents. It was clear that that child needed to be disciplined. Here's how I define discipline. It is the art and skill of removing that which should not be there. That includes behaviors and attitudes and it is designed to be corrective. Most of us are familiar with the Renaissance artist known as Michelangelo and his masterpiece, the sculpture of David. That statue is approximately 17 feet by six and a half feet, and it weighs over six tons. In short, it is massive. Now, When it started out, it was just simply a monstrous block of granite. When asked how he turned that into a fine piece of art, Michelangelo simply said, I removed that which should not be there. Now let me say this, true discipline, even if it is physical, it's not the same as abuse. Conversely, Abuse is not discipline. Abuse is abuse. That abuse, it can be physical, emotional, mental, or psychological. And abuse is not meant to correct behavior. It is meant to control the individual. If any of us are going to progress in life, we must exercise discipline. Let me digress just for a moment. In America, we do have a caste system. And I've talked about that before. At the top of the hierarchy is bloodline, not pigmentation. I've also elaborated how race is built in as a safeguard of the system. In other words, they use race to keep us divided. They want us focused on non-solutions to real problems or focused on problems that they've created and manufactured so so that the people at the top stay at the top, so that the people who are benefiting from the status quo continue to benefit from the status quo. Even in America, it's not a level playing field. Listen, that's understandable and acceptable. Why? Because life is not fair and it's not equal, especially as it pertains to outcome. In America, what we do have is the ability to move from one economic status to the next. And that ability is rooted in our choices and the exercising of discipline. The one thing that we should all be asking is am I being afforded equal protection under the law? 
that's the most that anyone can reasonably ask and expect. Because the number one way to oppress a people is to deny them equal protection under the law. We cannot go through life playing the victim or thinking that someone owes us something. We are where we are based on the choices that we've made. Some of us make better choices and better decisions. In America, you can start at the ass rock bottom. You can be given every disadvantage that we can think of and you can still be successful. That's not theory, that's fact. Let me digress just for a moment. There is a pattern, there is a way in which the Most High designed the world to function and operate. There are no man-made laws or systems that can overcome that, can prevent that from working and operating. That is wisdom, discipline, and sowing and reaping. If you live your life by wisdom, you exercise discipline, and you put the work in, you will see a return. So again, discipline is the art and skill of removing that which should not be there. That includes distractions. Talk about that just for a moment. So how do you overcome distractions? Well, here's how I do it. I create a list of the things that need to get done. And I place that list into a hierarchy. In other words, the most important thing is at the top. And that's done daily. And I work from that list. I have set intervals where I stop and I review my progress. I ask myself, am I being productive? Am I working towards my goal? I knew someone who, they set an alarm on their watch, which would go off periodically. And when it went off, they would ask themselves, what am I doing right now? Is it productive? Is it moving me towards my goal? Distractions can come in the form of people or activities. And remember, time will always play towards our weakness. For an example, I like playing video games. If I'm not careful, I can spend more time playing a game, telling myself I'm taking a break, and find that I've been doing that for 20 minutes instead of 15. You have to know what your weaknesses are, and you have to counteract them. Something that I, else that I've also noticed, when there are tasks that I don't want to do, I always can find something else that quote unquote needs my attention at that time, at that moment. I have to safeguard against that. Why? Because time will always play towards your weakness. Another aspect of discipline, as I see it, is owning your choices and your decisions. You don't get to blame someone else for your decisions, for your choices. That's about you being accountable. That is a form of discipline. That's all I got for today. And if you like the content and you want to support the channel, the Cash App is in the description. But again, more important than that is that you find this content helpful. So don't forget to leave a comment as well. All right, this is Order the Rhyme. Get over it, media.